Ten years ago, the thought of taking a hand from one person and transplanting it to another seemed like the plot of a science fiction movie. However, the vision of Jewish Hospital, coupled with the groundbreaking research performed at the University of Louisville and the expertise of world-renowned hand surgeons at Kleinert Coots and Associates Hand Care Center, the world's first successful hand transplant has become a reality. This is the story of how the program came to be and the two men whose lives have been changed forever. The process started back in 1996 when Jewish Hospital established a collaborative research partnership with University of Louisville and Kleinert Coots and Associates Hand Care Center to look at the feasibility of a hand transplant. Then in 1997, the team of University of Louisville researchers studied hand transplants in large animal models. Based on the success of their research, the partnership was encouraged by a group of international experts to move forward. The Internal Review Board agreed, and on July 23, 1998, surgeons announced they were approved to perform the landmark hand transplant. The surgery was to work like this. The bones from the donor hand were attached to the recipient's bone structure using metal plates. Surgeons then tested the tendons in the hand. Each time a tendon is pulled, the finger to which it is attached flexes. Tendons are then attached. Doctors stitch together the tiny nerves in the hand to nerves in the recipient's arm. The arteries and veins are connected to get blood moving to the new hand and the skin is stitched together. So now that the team was ready to go, all that was needed was a patient. When Matt Scott went into surgery on January 24, 1999, he was to become the first hand transplant recipient in the United States. Doctors were upbeat after the 14 and a half hour procedure. Matt is uh, doing well. That's the that's the, the short and sweet. He's uh, everything looks good with the uh, with the hand. Uh, it's warm, uh, good temperature, nice. Uh, appears to have good blood flow. As you can imagine, the eyes of media from around the world focused on Louisville and Jewish Hospital. This is Dateline Tuesday, February 9, 1999. Tonight, a devastating accident destroyed his hand. Now he's risking his life to become whole again. I just wanted to get my name on somebody's list somewhere. That list belonged to doctors at Jewish Hospital, University of Louisville Hospital, and Kleinert and Coots Hand Care Center. After years of meticulous research, they had a transplant team in place, ready to proceed. Scott's surgery was a success, and after just two weeks with his new hand, he spoke publicly about his experience. I anticipate to be able to do some of the more simpler things in life that I haven't been able to, to stand in front of my classrooms with an open book in my left hand and write on the chalkboard with my right, to um, pick my sons up with two hands, both of them at the same time. I can't do that now. Scott's progress was remarkable. After intensive therapy, he was able to tie his shoes, open doors, and write his name. A lifelong Philadelphia Phillies fan, Matt's crowning moment came when he used his new hand to throw out the first pitch in a game at Veterans Stadium. For the next two years, doctors monitored his progress while looking for another patient. When Scott returned to Jewish Hospital to celebrate the second anniversary of his successful transplant, there was another patient waiting in the wings. Jerry Fisher, a self-employed contractor, husband, and father of three boys from Michigan with a passion for Harley-Davidson's. On February 16, 2001, Fisher became the second person in the U.S. to receive a hand transplant at Jewish Hospital. Surgeons took 13 hours to attach the donor hand. Following the operation, doctors felt like they were two for two. The operation itself went really uh, very smoothly with no unexpected surprises. The patient is now um, in recovery, actually back on the floor. And really, I can't be more pleased with the way things have turned out. 
Fisher was anxious to start his new life with a new hand. As Jewish hospitals celebrated the second transplant, people around the world saw highlights of the procedure. My first question is, what, what did you feel like when you woke up and, and uh, later, a few days later, when they unwrapped your hand and you saw it for the first time? What, what, what went through your head? Well, I felt I was, I was back to being me again. I, I missed my hand over the five years and uh, it felt wonderful. I, it, it looks great and it's working really good too, actually. As he continued his therapy, Fisher made progress in regaining use of his new hand. Their work will never be over. Scott and Fisher will remain on a battery of immunosuppressive drugs, much like a kidney transplant patient for the life of the new hand. They will be closely monitored by specialists and therapists. The quality of life has been much improved for these two men. They have shared experiences no one else can imagine. They both had lost their hands in mishaps with fireworks. It was appropriate that the two of them joined together to tell others to leave fireworks to the professionals at the annual Thunder Over Louisville celebration. And in a move neither could have imagined at one time, they hit the button to set off the largest fireworks display in American history. Thanks to the foresight of Jewish Hospital and pioneering surgeons at Kleiner Kutz and Associates Hand Care Center, Along with the University of Louisville researchers, Matt Scott and Jerry Fisher each received a great gift that so many of us take for granted. <laughs>